All right, uh, there's actually a few other things that we can determine from the stress drain curve of a metal that are uh, quite interesting. And I'd like to just spend a moment looking at that. So again, we've got stress here um, on the vertical axis, strain, typical metal. We have a curve that looks something like this. Comes up linear elastic, plastic, ultimate tensile strength, and then fracture. All right, and so we've you know we've determined all these strengths in here: the yield strength, the uh, ultimate tensile strength, the fracture strength. But what other properties can we determine? Well, first of all, one of them that you you, you may have um, heard about is uh, the ductility. All right, so ductility has a usage in, in common language, um, which is you know roughly you know you might say, well, what's ductility all about? If something's very ductile. You might say, well, it describes how much you can stretch something. But of course, we know that that's not really accurate enough. Stretch means that referring to elastic or plastic. Um, so we've got to we've got to be be better than that. And in fact, I'll tell you, ductility is ductility is a measure of the plastic strain. Okay, so we know clearly it's a strain quantity, and it refers to plastic deformation only, plant plastic strain to fracture. All right, now we've got something we can work with, right? Plastic strain to fracture. So let's see. Well, this is the point of fracture. That's fracture. So at fracture, if we unload, we'd have we'd have a value here for total strain. Let me write that in there for you, total strain. If we unloaded, so sorry, if we took the total strain there at fracture, just a moment before it fractured, that would be our total strain. But what about if we unloaded it? Just you said somehow you knew just infinitesimally before it was going to fracture. Well. We know that the Young's modulus is structure independent, so it won't change. So we would have unloaded that same modulus, which means we'd come back down here to a value on the strain axis, a finite value corresponding to zero stress, right? It's unloaded. There's no stress on it, but there's still some persistent strain. That means that strain has to be plastic. That's a plastic strain, which means that this strain in here is elastic. That's elastic. And that makes sense because what is that? That's the strain underneath this linear unloading portion. And the unloading portion, if it's linear, is governed by Hooke's law. And we know that that's elastic because Hooke's law refers to elastic behavior. So if we unload down and we get plastic strain, that plastic strain has got to be the ductility. Okay, so ductility, you unload at fracture, and the remaining uh, strain is the uh, ductility. Another interesting property that we can determine from the st stress strain behavior for a metal, or for other material classes as well, is the, well, it's called the toughness. And the toughness is, is sometimes not such an intuitive quantity. You know, you can understand strength, force over area. You get a sense for that if it's pressure, if you will. Um, even modulus, you can kind of get a bit of an intuitive sense for it because it's it's kind of it's you know how how hard is it to bend something uh, elastically? Um, it's a little harder, but the toughness is. Toughness, I'll tell you what the toughness is. Toughness. Toughness is the energy, it's an energy term. And it's the energy absorbed to fracture. Energy absorbed to fracture. So what we can do actually is integrate 
or that is take the area under the curve. So if we take the area under this curve here, it would be uh, this area here, right? All this area here under the curve is actually the, um, the toughness. And how do we know that? Well, we could look at it dimensionally if we're taking um, the product of stress and strain. We look at the dimensions, okay, dimensions. Stress has units of pascals, right? And what's a pascal? A pascal is a newton per square meter. Well, I can go around living my life multiplying whatever I want by one, right? I just multiplied this screen by one. You didn't even notice. So here we go. I multiply newtons per square meter by one meter over meter. And I end up with a familiar term in the numerator, newton meter. And of course, the, in the denominator, I've got volume units. But what's a newton meter? A newton meter is nothing more than a joule. So we've now got joules per volume as the units when we integrate under this. And that's great because we wanted an energy unit. So if we integrate under the entire curve up to fracture, it tells us how much energy went into fracturing that. And that includes, remember, that includes elastic and plastic deformation. Final thing that we can um, obtain from a stress strain curve, which is another energy unit, and it's quite useful. It's a stored energy unit this time. We've got stress and strain. We've got our linear elastic reagent, plastic deformation, and fracture is the resilience. And so the resilience is a measure of the stored elastic strain energy at the yield strength. So again, we know, all right, if it's going to be um, an energy term, energy per volume for a given volume of material, we're going to have to integrate under the curve. And where are we going to do it from? Well, we'll go to the yield strength. And we um, go down from there. And if we unload it at the yield strength, I'm going to be a little careful about something. If we unload it at the yield strength, you'd find that you had a little sliver of um, permanent or plastic strain, right? Maybe it's close to the 2% um, uh, so 0.2 percent offset um, strain. You'd probably you'd have some plastic strain that had actually accumulated when we had yielding. Even though we, you know, for practice for practical purposes, we say it's elastic before yielding and it's plastic after. You might have a sliver, so we're not going to include that if we're going to be really strict with our definition here. And so that area there is the resilience, and that area actually, is just the area of a triangle, right? It's the area of a triangle. And we know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height, which in our case is one half of, well, what's the base? The base is the elastic strain, isn't it? And that's good because we're after the stored elastic strain energy. So we've got strain elastic. And what's the height? Well, the height is the yield strength. But we can, again, do better than this because if it's elastic, it's the area under this, which the strain underneath this linear unloading portion. And the linear un unloading portion, we have a mathematical equation for. We have stress equals E times strain. It's a straight line. So that means we can say, oh, okay, well, that means that the strain is going to be equal to sigma over E. And we fire that in here, and we find that the resilience is, I should erase that, the resilience is going to be one half of sigma, and this is sigma yield, right? That's what we're using here. So that's sigma yield 
over B times sigma yield. And so at the end of the day, the resilience, which we often use this, uh, I, I'll introduce this symbol here. The full name for this is modulus of resilience. And modulus is just a fancy word for special number. Okay, so our special number here is the modulus of resilience, and we use the uppercase letter U, is one half sigma yield squared upon E. And that's an interesting little equation. It tells you the stored strain energy for a material. So if you want to make a material for a spring, you look for something with a high modulus of resilience. And again, the, the units here, the dimensions here of of modulus resilience are going to be joules per cubic meter.